We have uh, Joshua Rothbart back on the show again to join us to talk about all things precious metals, gold, silver, um, and other metals. Uh, welcome back to Talking Wealth today, Joshua. How are you? I've been good, Janine. Dear, good to see you. It's been uh, too long. I know. Been absent for so long. She doesn't let me yeah. talk to you, mate. She keeps you all to herself. <laughs> She's very, very selfish like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are talking about something so exciting being gold and silver particularly yeah, girls love gold in. <laughs> and diamonds yeah so and diamonds, yeah. so um look you know you've been super busy have you been um focusing on gold or silver one one particular area um we've been both actually um and and actually combining with our or the crypto services i mean it's been quite an active market i think last time i was we, we chat was uh in june and it's been a bit of a bumpy ride, I think, mm. yeah, since for precious metals. I mean, we've seen some highs, we've seen some lows, and and it's always affect the the um, uh, uh, purchasing uh, patterns of investors. You know, it, it's uh, usually uh, when we see uh, the price goes down, the investors are a bit hesitant. They wanted to see if we reach the bottom. Mm. Um, and funny enough, when it starts picking up again, then they think it's time we are entering into a new rally, and then they start purchasing. So it's only the balance between clients liquidating holdings or, 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 or adding to their portfolio. But, you know, when it moves, it makes us busy, which is good. It's always good. Mm. The investors yeah. are always the experts on what's happening with gold, aren't they? Not you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We just follow their instructions. You yeah. know? We're, we're the executors. Yeah. Everyone have different, you know, everyone they have different opinions. I can tell you that, especially if you're looking on the, um, you know, we cater to quite a lot of clients from the doomsday a scenario people mm. uh, the preppers to the more rational high net worth individuals and and what we really tend to see is everyone are especially the preppers for them it's uh, every day is, a, is, is every day is, there's a disaster coming and even if there are a few years of calamity they still think it's around the corner mm. so we're not I, that's not my personal philosophy i can understand where they're coming from but we tend to look at it more from a rational kind of uh, uh, portfolio diversification mm. uh, element rather than from a, from a preppers or doomsday scenario uh, uh, angle. So from, say, September 20, uh, 2020, from then, what do you think um, was driving the price of gold? And do you think it, um, we'll see commodities go higher despite this talk about stagflation? Yeah, so... Uh, let, let's let's think what happened since September actually, and and I think uh, we were wrong uh, uh, in September and probably also in, in June last year mm -hmm. because we expected the price to go higher. There were signs mm -hmm. it's going to go higher. Um, 2020 definitely went tower which was a good year, but if you look at what happened this year, actually we're we're I would say disappointed with the performance of gold. I mean, gold went down year to date around six percent. Uh, uh, silver is maybe slightly up two percent. That's not that's not very I would say uh, uh, not a dramatic appreciation. So what happened I think since uh, uh, since uh, uh, since last year into this year is that there was kind of assumption that things are going to get better with the vaccine. You know we chatted about it before the broadcast with the vaccine mm -hmm. with with the uh, 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 with finding maybe cures to COVID, the economy is opening up, there were the feeling things are getting better. And of course, kind of diminished the appetite for safe haven assets. Mm. Um, and we see it now, you know, the dollar is, is, is getting stronger. The Fed just announced that they're not gonna, they're not concerned about the inflation. They think it's, it's, a, it's a, just a temporary phase. So it seems like it seems right. Uh, profits, by the way, equities are doing very well because profits are our corporate profits are high and mm -hmm. solid. So it seems like things are good. Things are getting better. Um, but we still think there's a crisis around the corner that that may may happen, may materialize or may not. It's a bit shaky. So if you look at what gold did, it was pretty shaky. The price went down, then it went up again. It, it was very sensitive, I think, to very short term events. Yeah, but there was kind of a short-term concern then it went up it, then it eases it went down again so it's really there was no clear uh there's no clear kind of uh, uh, linear movement in the price both for gold and for silver mm. now mm. having said that if we look back again if we zoom out a bit we tend to look at the cycles on a very kind of uh, uh, too much on the on the uh, uh, micro but if you zoom out a bit 
still gold appreciate in the last three years around and and the regular average of 10 percent a year which is still great that is great. silver did even mm. better silver appreciated almost 50 percent in the last three years so mm. we are in par with the long-term statistics and the performance but we have to admit that it wasn't doing as well as we would anticipate considering everything that's going around in the world um i think one of the things is by the way is still the uh, uh the quantitative easing, the effects. So there's a lot of cheap, actually cheap money in the market. Yes. So when you have cheap market, you don't have to go to a solid and, 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 and low risk asset like gold. You can, you can gamble mm. if you'd like on more of a high risk items, high risk assets. Mm. So all the things considered, I think that's what kind of kept, kept the uh, uh, bullion prices a bit deeper, a bit on the lower, on the lower level. So does there tend to be a flight to gold when you have a situation where inflation is really playing a part? So right now we're starting to see inflation lift off long to off these lows, and but people are still talking about stagflation. So what is it that gold investors have to be thinking more about? Is there more a concern about inflation, or does that help the gold price, or is it stagflation if it then takes over that could um, be a problem with gold? Well, well both. I mean, on, on, on the inflation side, usually the appetite for gold increases just because of its quality to preserve wealth. Mm. So if all the assets are, are rising in prices, gold kind of tends to keep your purchase power on the same level. So usually we say it, there's no, statistically, by the way, there's no direct correlation, let's say, between the uh, consumer index in the US and gold. But if you look on a global level, you, you do see some pattern there because, again, prices go up. And we see it actually in a, in a lot of uh, uh, developing economies with high inflation. People will buy, will get their salary in the rush to buy gold just to keep them through the month, mm. right? To kind, of, to kind of cover them for the price appreciation during the next month and then until so they can still buy sorry, their groceries and all that. So on and, and this, it's still... Uh, uh, inflation, I would say, is good for gold. But yes, we are speaking now, or, or there are concerns about stagflation, which is inflation with low growth or even mm. negative growth. Yeah. And this, we have to look, and uh, the record we have is from the 1970s. Mm. Um, and and the, the, between the, the decade between 1970 and 1980, when we had big stagflation globally, actually gold was doing very well. I think in this decade, gold went up 1,500%. Or so, so it really boomed. Silver mm. less so, but it really boomed. So, if you look on historically, stagflation again, it's very good for gold because actually it combines the worst of both worlds, right? You have yep. you have the in inflationary pressure, but then the add-in it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, uh, being reflected in growth. So the concerns are actually increasing on whether the economy is is viable or not. Mm. So what impact then is because it's a whole mm. lot of criteria that could be affecting the gold price. So what is the impact of a strong US dollar at the moment, do you think? Uh, well, you know, gold and US dollars are, are in a way competitive, right? They are competing on the same, on the same uh, I would say, label of the safe assets or the, if you want, the kind of uh, global reserve currency. So usually when the, when the dollar is stronger, then the appetite for gold is, is, is diminished because you can buy dollars, you don't need to buy gold, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so the strong dollar definitely affects the price of gold. So yeah, you need to look at the, at, at the dollar. You need to look at, the, uh, at inflation. We need to look at the, um, at the, at the policies, at the fiscal policies of the central bank. So we know the, the Federal Reserve is gonna slowly taper the, uh, the purchases of bonds. So that's kind of not gonna be very helpful to, for gold. Mm -hmm. So if I look, I would say in the next few months, and I try try to predict, knowing I may be very much wrong, mm. but I wouldn't see much I wouldn't see much movement in the price of gold. I think it will be the same pattern we saw in the last few months. Mm. Yeah. It'll be bad news. It will spike a bit because there'll be suddenly, you know, there'll be again news about stagflation and inflation. People will buy gold. Then there'll be a rosy uh, a, a rosy earning post in the equities market. People will dump their gold. So mm -hmm. I don't see there be a major difference. One thing I would I would seem to, I would look is the interest rates, because if at some point the interest rates are going to go up and they're going to suck some liquidity from the equities market, 
this this may bring a correction in the equities market mm-hmm. and then we see people again running to gold yep. so i think that's the only scenario at the moment unless again you know a, a black swan event but i'm not talking about extreme yeah. extreme event so gold's what already i would fallen, say is gold's already fallen quite st- steadily from that um peak so do you, it's it's likely it could slip slightly mm-hmm. further couldn't it as part of the move that it's unfolding in now um, before we then see a proper tick back up. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think we can, we can go down to 1650 or 1640 uh, mm. US an ounce, even slightly lower before it will bounce back. Because yep. again, there's no, there, there, there's no really, there's not much news that, mm. that will support higher level of gold because it seems like things are, are getting back to normal. Yeah. I would want, want to mention one thing, and it's always interesting for me as you know, we're dealing in physical gold mm-hmm. to see the disparity between the um, the paper market and, and the prices, the paper market and the physical market. Because yeah. if you look there, World Gold Council just uh, um, uh, posted the data for Q3 2021. Actually, they, the demand in the ETF, and I would say uh, the paper gold, was down 8%. But interestingly, the demand for physical gold was up 18% year wow. on year. Wow. So, so which kind of matches what we're saying, because if, if you think, if you're trying to do a, a short-term hedge, mm. because you're, you have, you're afraid of, of a short-term scenario, you'll buy it here, you'll hold it, danger is, is mm. off the table, you'll sell it and, 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 and move the liquidity elsewhere. But if you are concerned more on the longer-term effect, then you will buy physical. Mm. And and we see that really demand for physical, both for investment. By the way, very much also from a jewelry and and on the uh, and for technology uh, sector. So technology was up nine percent. Jewelry is up forty percent. So we're well, we're coming into to, the festive uh, season, so that should be good for gold, shouldn't it? Right, and people have more money, and people, mm. you know, the economy is better. People are back to work, so people buy more jewelry. The factories are working, uh, you know, they, they're back to working. They're more less uh, curfews, less lockdown. So mm-hmm. you look at all this, the demand for physical actually is quite strong. Central banks, for example, were buying a lot of gold this year from India to Thailand. The Polish government just announced they're going to double their gold reserve this year because they're getting ready for an extreme scenario. So it's interesting to see that although the price doesn't move much, if you are really concerned, you go on the physical side, whether you're a government mm. or you're an individual, you still buy the physical, but on the shorter term, mm. there's less appetite, and we see it from the data on the ETF. The fact that it's, uh, it's down 8% year on year shows, in my opinion, shows that actually those short-term, I would say, um, uh, 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 opportunists that mm. buy gold just for a short-term hedge, they are leaving the market. They have a better avenues. You put it in equities, put it in real estate. You make better better returns on your money, right? Mm. Yeah. So I just think it's what I, what Joshua was saying. Mm. I'm just thinking, really, gold is a is almost a hedge against inflation because it's going to have that steady yep. rise, as you said, ten percent per annum on average. That what it does, and so, and we also know one of the other comments you were talking about is holding physical cash or hold uh, having you know uh, bonds, those sorts of investments are really more uncertain if that makes sense and your your spending power if you've got money in cash whether it's bonds or physical cash or whatever it is the spending power that's being eroded at the moment and and as you're talking about stagflation could make that even worse Uh, the spending power is having holding physical gold you could be defending yourself about that or around that area exactly no, exactly. so I think couldn't what, stagflation improve the situation for people wanting to buy gold? No, I'm talking about, you know, with having physical cash versus gold. Like yeah, okay. you're, you're preserving your spending power by having gold. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so, so that, that's what I would look at. Mm. I would look at the, I would look at how inflation unfolds mm. in the future, not only in the US, but in the EU, uh, in China, I think it's important to look at mm. the inflation and at the same time looking at the growth. Listen, mm. the GDP is it, 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 down because... We have a lot of issues, you know, with supply chain issues globally. I mean, even I can tell you from from our angle of of moving gold around. I called the other day and asked for a gold delivery. They said we're very we don't have truck drivers, we don't have couriers, we just don't have enough employees to cater to what we need. That's that, that's what the logistic company told me because people were off work, they were getting incentive. Mm-hmm. And if you're a truck driver that used to drive for twelve hours and now you've been sitting home with your family for six months. Mm. Actually, they don't want to go back to the road and <laughs> yeah. sitting on a truck for this trail. Like, why am I doing that? I had, I had 
pretty good time with my family and my kids for, for it's not like a high paid salary. It's not like it, we're talking about white collar, you know, uh, executive in a bank. So these are kind of the jobs that are missing now. This is what mm. caused this supply chain constraint, which shrink the GDP, which in turn, you know, give room to inflation. And it's all kind of, there's a potential to become a storm. Mm -hmm. I I heard one economist talking about the perfect storm with the energy shortage in China, you know, the rationing diesel now in China. So I would I would keep a close eye on on GDP numbers and and, and price index in few jurisdictions Mm -hmm. and on the dollar and of course on the interest rate. This would be the four parameter. If 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 the Fed, if the US Fed is right and it's just kind of a transition transitionary phase, fine. But as uh, someone wrote a while ago in a radio article, the Fed was wrong in the last 30 years in almost everything they said. <laughs> so, I, so it depends how you look at their, how yeah. you look at their statement, right? Look, um, um, Joshua, you've put it all together for people and, mm. and things for them to watch out for. I, I think overall um, into 2022, when gold bo- bottoms out, it could be some really good opportunities for people. But People with long-term views probably, you know, they'll still be buying up yep. gold. As, you know, but um, look, I think there's a lot of people who will be interested in hearing more from you. Can you please tell us um, where your where our viewers can actually find out more about you? Um, everyone are welcome to uh, uh, log into our website at jrotbart.com, jrotbart.com, and they can find our blog uh, 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 and see what we're saying more in the long term, or follow us on Twitter. Right. Where I, te- I just started, my team just made me uh, sign up to Twitter <laughs> to share my words of wisdom. I don't know, I feel like, uh, like a relic. because I have the same Twitter problem. Nothing, so. I have the same yeah. problem. Now my team want me to be on TikTok. And I said, I don't dance in front of cameras, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I told the team, this is it. Twitter would be the most advanced kind of uh, social media because this is where kind of you can put more, I would say, the uh, the soundbite that people are looking to uh, mm. are wanting to hear. Yeah. But on jrothbart.com, they can find more kind of a long and longer kind of uh, analysis. Great. Thank you, Joshua Rothbart, for being on Talking Wealth again. Take care. Okay, thank you. Bye. Take care. For more information on our guest in today's episode, visit the link on screen right now. For more Talking Wealth, visit 